Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the second and the fourth problem of today's weekly contest. Number of subarrays that match a pattern 2 and number of subarrays that match a pattern 1. Both the problems are exactly similar. The only difference lies in the constraint. The value of nums dot length is less than or equals to 100 in problem 2, whereas the value of nums is less than or equals to 1 million in problem 4. So, as always, we'll start from scratch and build the solution starting from the brute force. So, let's get started. The problem states that you are given a zero indexed array nums of size n and a zero indexed array pattern of size m. Now, the pattern will contain minus 1, 0, or 1. Now, a subarray nums of i to j of size m plus 1 is said to match the pattern if the following condition hold for each element pattern of k. So, nums of i plus k plus 1 should be greater than nums of i plus k if pattern k is 1. Similarly, if pattern k is 0, nums of i plus k plus 1 should be equal to nums of i plus k. And similarly, if pattern k is minus 1, nums of i plus k plus 1 should be less than nums of i plus k. So, if these conditions satisfies for each k in the pattern, then we will say nums of i to j matches the pattern. And we have to return the count of subarrays that matches the pattern. So, let us take an example. Let us say the nums is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and pattern is 1, 1. So, pattern is 1, 1 that means nums of i plus k plus 1 should always be greater than nums of i plus k. In other words, we have to figure out the subarrays which are increasing and are of size 3. So, if you see, there are 4 subarrays of size 3 which are increasing 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, and 4, 5, 6. And hence the answer here is 4. So, let's take one more example. Let's say this is the given array nums and pattern is 1, 0, minus 1. So, in this case, uh, if you see, there are only 2 subarrays that are matching the pattern which are 1, 4, 4, 1 and 3, 5, 5, 3. So, if you remember, the pattern is of size length, uh, size, size 3. So, you have to figure out the, the subarrays of size 4. So, if you look at this subarray of size 4, 1, 4, 4, 1, look at the first character, 1 and 4. So, 4 is greater than 1. That means, it satisfies pattern 0 because pattern 0 is 1. The value at nums of i plus 0 plus 1 should be greater than nums of i plus 0, which is the case. Similarly, pattern 1 is 0, it means they should be equal, so it is equal. And pattern 1 is, uh, pattern 2 is minus 1, that means the next character should be lesser and the next character is indeed lesser. So, this pattern satisfies or this subarray satisfies the given pattern. Similarly, 3553 3 also satis satisfies the given pattern. No other subarray satisfy this particular pattern and hence the answer here is 2. So, hope the problem statement is clear. Now, how to solve this? First of all, what is the brute force solution to this problem? Let us say this is the given array and the pattern is again 1, 0, minus 1. So, what is, how will you actually approach this in the brute force manner? So, what you can do? Okay, I want to figure out the subarrays. So, I will try out every possible subarray of size pattern length, pattern dot length plus 1. So, here pattern dot length is 3. So, I will try out all the subarrays of size 4. So, this is the first subarray of size 4 and then you will say, okay, this is the second subarray of size 4. This is the third subarray of size 4 and so on and so forth. And for each subarray, you will try to match this with the pattern. So, let us say for this particular subarray, you want to understand whether this matches the pattern or not. You will look at the first character, uh, the value at the next one is lesser than the first one, which means the pattern should be minus 1, but the first uh, element in the pattern is 1. So, this is the message. So, this L2R subarray is not a valid match. You will try out next, uh, next subarray and so on and so forth. So, what will be the total time complexity of the entire approach? Basically, you are trying out every subarray of size of some size x. So, in worst case, you will be trying out n different subarrays. 
and for each subarray what you are doing you are iterating over the subarray and seeing whether it matches with the pattern or not so that will take again order m time assuming that m is the length of the uh, pattern so overall the complexity is order n into m this brute force solution will pass for the second problem because the value of n and m is both 100 so you you are allowed to do this uh, linear search or the exhaustive search over the subarray for the second problem but for the third problem for the fourth problem this is not the case because the value of n and m both is 10 power 6 so this is not possible so how will you optimize this notice there are two things one you are iterating over all the subarrays second you are trying to figure out whether there is a match or not so if you don't want to iterate over this all the subarrays it means you need some logic to figure out which subarray is good or not beforehand so this is bit hard so we may be able to optimize the matching part so let's try with that and if we don't succeed there we will uh, look off look for other alternatives so we are doing matching right so just to simplify this a bit let's just see uh, let's just say that we already figured out what is the value uh, for each of these uh, positions beforehand right so we know that uh, one is greater than four so here the value of the pattern should be one similarly four is equals to four the value of the pattern should be zero similarly uh, for this one one is less than four so the value should be minus one and so on and so forth now what you are doing in the brute force solution you are simply checking this match is it a match yes so we increment the answer is it a match no will not increment is it a match no match no is it a match yes so you increment the answer and so on and so forth so that's what you are doing in the brute force solution now if you want to somehow say whether this is a match with this without iterating over this entire subarray what will you do again if you have been following this channel at least for past couple of weeks now this problem kind of reoccur almost every week from past couple of weeks so i would strongly encourage you to pause and try to think by yourself so if you have thought about it good if not the simple keyword is hatching you can either do hatching to figure out uh, whether this entire string matches with this entire string this is nothing but a string right you can uh, if you find this one difficult let's just uh, replace this entire thing with a string let's say one represent a zero represent b and minus one represent c so you can simply replace this entire thing with a string and similarly you can replace this uh, given pattern as well with a string right now the, the, the simple thing is uh, you are doing a string match whether it is a match or not and uh, i hope this now makes sense that uh, you can to make this match faster you can hash this string and you can also uh, somehow figure out the hash of a substring of the original string efficiently and if you are able to figure out the hash of the original string efficiently without actually iterating over the entire substring you can do the match with just one mathematical uh, comparison and instead of order m time for the match you will then take order m order one time depending on whether you are able to come up with the hash of the substring of the original string efficiently or not and that's exactly what we have discussed in the last couple of videos uh, in lead code weekly 380 uh, this was uh, discussed and I think uh, in 381 as well this was discussed and in last one exactly the last one 383 there was almost a very exact problem that we have discussed so I would encourage you to watch these things uh, to understand how to do hashing and if you know like if you don't want to do hashing there is another so hashing is like probability data structure so it may or may not work depending on your hash function but if you don't want to do hatching, there are other string matching algorithms as well. For example, KMP. So KMP will help you figure out this exact thing very efficiently. Or you can use uh, RabinCarp as well. RabinCarp is just nothing but just hashing, as, uh, hashing only. So you can use any string matching algorithm basically to figure out where this pattern exists in the entire string 
or how many times this pattern exists in the entire string. So once you figure, like you can use Z algorithm as well. I think uh, Z also uh, figure out the same thing. So any string matching algorithm will work. You can just the problem is literally now to figure out how many times this particular pattern exists in the original string. So the complexity of these Z, KMP, and everything is uh, for everything it is order n plus m uh, only. So we are well within the time constraint where value of n and m is 10 power 6. So hope this entire solution makes sense. If you have any doubts, feel free to post them in the comment section below. Next, we look at the code. Again, uh, if you have watched this point, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to code this entire thing by yourself. If you don't know about hashing, feel free to copy paste the KMP or the Rabin car part from anywhere uh, online or you can uh, copy the function from my code as well. And then try to code the Rabin car or this KMP or the Z by yourself because that's what is very important. And string matching is something that uh, actually help you in a lot of problems. As you can see, this was a problem with arrays, but uh, surprisingly string matching was handy here. So next, let's look at the code. The code is exactly what we discussed. We converted this entire given nums into a string ABC for a byte understanding whether the next value is less than, greater than or equals to the previous one. And similarly, we convert this entire pattern into a string of ABC as well. Now, what we do, we just simply apply this Rabin carp algorithm, which will give us how at what all position this pattern occurs in this string. And because we don't, we just want the count of those, we just simply do size and return that. Okay. So next, let's look at the Rabin carp. This is again, we have discussed this multiple times. Uh, so here, what we are doing, or basically the, the main idea is you hash this entire string, you will get some x, right? And then you figure out the hash of a substring here efficiently. And if you are able to figure out the hash of a substring efficiently, the entire problem is solved. So let's say, uh, so what you will do, let, let's say your hash function is uh, p power i into ch, right? This is your hash function. So in this case, ch is a and p is let's say any prime. So let's keep it p. So this is p into 1, right? This is p square into 2, right? And similarly, this is p cube into 3 and so on and so forth. Now, let's say you want to find the hash of or let's just do one more p power 4 into 1, right? Let's say you want to find the hash of this one. You can simply do a prefix sum. Prefix sum will give you the sum of these things and because you already have the sum of these, you can subtract and you will get the sum of these three hashes, right? But here the first character starts at index 2, but you want your first character to start at because you, let's say you are matching this three characters with this three character. So if you hash this, this will be p power 1 into a p power 2 into b and p power 3 into c, right? So what you want, you want this to be compared with this. So here the first character starts with p power 2 and then second one p power 3 and then third one p power 4. But you want them to be p power 1, p power 2, p power 3. So either you divide this entire thing by p or you multiply p here, right? So this sum, once you have figured out the sum, the only thing extra you need to do is either divide by some p power x depending on where you are starting from or you multiply that p power x in the hash of the pattern itself and just do a equality comparison and if they matches the string is a match otherwise it is not a match again this is probabilistic depending on your hash function so we have discussed uh, some of the alternatives as well in the previous video you can watch that if you ha still have doubts feel free to post them in the comments below i am happy to record one separate video for just hashing. So this is what we are doing. We are simply figuring out the powers of p first so that we can, we don't need to calculate p power i every time. So p power, we calculate the powers of p for every possible size. And then we figured out the hash of the original string itself, 
right so for every uh, if you remember we need to figure out the prefix sum here right so hash of i plus 1 is equals to hash of i plus this is the hash of the current position p power i multiplied by the position uh, the value itself now we figure out the hash of the pattern in the very same way right now finally we have the hash of the pattern and the prefix the prefix sum of the hash of the original string so now if you want to make it a match you just start your string and see and just figure out the hash of the string starting at index 0 then figure out the hash of the string starting at index 1 figure out hash of the string starting at index 2 and so on and so forth so that's what we are doing we are trying to figure out the hash of the string starting at index i and ending at i plus uh, pattern dot length minus 1 so for that this is the hash right and notice we either have to divide this by some p power i or multiply the the hash of the original string by p power i because we need to make them compare at the same scale right so for that we simply multiplied here we simply multiplied the hash of the original pattern by p power i and simply check whether whether they are equal if they are equal we found a match otherwise there is no match so hope this intersection makes sense if you have any doubts, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I would be happy to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.